Welcome back. Hundreds of Canadian doctors, lawyers, academics and politicians have signed an open letter demanding accountability for the death of Solomon Fakiri, a mentally ill man who died at the hands of Ontario prison guards four years ago. Joining us now to discuss the latest developments in this case is his brother Yusuf Fakiri. Yusuf, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, can you talk a little bit about how this letter came to be? Yeah, the letter came to be after our national movement where we spoke uh, in more than 20 Canadian cities. And the letter is the significance of uh, academics, physicians, lawyers, journalists that are frustrated uh, with respect to accountability and transparency um, into my brother's death. And what's important about the open letter, some of the signatories you know, include a wide array of Canadians from different sectors. You have prominent Bay Street lawyers that are partners to Desmond Cole, prominent Canadian journalists, to Senators Kim Pate and Peter Beam, to 30 physicians. What this says is that effectively uh, Canadians across the nation are frustrated that uh, a man with a mental illness was uh, was killed under government care. And this is uh, this is very important. People need to take note of that. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so for those in our audience who are watching who might not be familiar with the case, can you give us a brief overview about what happened to your brother? Absolutely. Uh, here's what we know. At the time of Suleiman's death, both his legs and his hands were tied. He was pepper sprayed twice. My family tried to see him uh, four times in the 11 days that he was there. I uh, weren't able to see him at all. He was supposed to be transferred to a hospital three days before his death. It was ordered by an Ontario judge. And according to the Ontario coroner, he had 50 bruises on his body and 20 to 30 guards were taking turns as they viciously beat him to death. Those are the facts that we have. Okay. So the man was 30 years old and his mental illness was known to the individuals at that institution. And so basically that those considerations weren't taken into consideration uh, and that's what ended up happening to his demise? Absolutely. What's, what's even more tragic is that uh, Suleiman was given to my family in a body bag and to this day there's been no transparency and no accountability. This is a Canadian man, this was a vulnerable person and essentially he died at the custodian of the state. And all my family was given and most of the information we were given to this day is virtually nothing. And how about that? There was an internal report, correct, done back in 2017 by the Kawartha Lakes Police Service. Can you discuss what it said or what it found? Absolutely. So let's talk about the Kawartha Lakes Police Service. It was the local police investigating the local jail. And what, what came out of the report and what we know is that um, they took a year into their investigation. They decided to not press charges. But what's also significant out of that report is that they did not speak to the eyewitness who was across to the man's cell. The individual that saw Suleiman's vicious beating death was never interviewed by the Kawartha Lakes Police Service. And the police decided to not press charges the Kawartha Lakes Police Service, and we were never told as to why. So you don't know why they even didn't speak to that person or anything like no, that? No, we do not know why they did not speak with, with Mr. John Thibault, who that, that was the eyewitness. And to this day, we still do not know why they did, that they did not press charges. And has he spoken at all, or have you spoken with him? Mr. Thibault, there was, a, there was an uh, investigation that the Fifth Estate did, and Mr. Thibault came forward uh, outlining um, what effectively happened to Suleiman. Um, uh, and myself and my family has not personally spoken with Mr. Thibault. And so where is the actual investigation presently? So there was a new police investigation that was called in January 2019, where the uh, second police investigation led by the Ontario Provincial Police Force. We're now entering 14 months since that investigation began, and we still do not know um, when they, you know, as to when the decision will be made by the Ontario Provincial Police. Frankly, it's quite frustrating that we're waiting 14 months. We've actually been waiting almost three years, actually more than three years, for, for the death of my brother, and we still do not have had any accountability or any transparency. Now, this movement, it's called Justice for Sully? Yes. And so why is it important for you, and what do you think the far-reaching impacts could be uh, moving forward with this? The story isn't about my brother anymore. It, it, the Justice for Sully movement is a movement symbolic of Canadian civil society saying that enough is enough. Where Canadian civil society, individuals from multiple sectors have come on and said that this movement is a symbolic change for Canadians looking at the at this very fatal nexus of mental illness, segregation and the prison system. And the Canadians are saying that we need to put a stop to this at both the provincial and the federal level. 
And Suleiman's story was a catalyst that inspired the movement, but the movement goes beyond the borders of Ontario. This is a national problem, and the movement goes beyond the borders and beyond the story of Suleiman Fikiri. This involves Mr. Dean, the fellow in Vancouver who had a mental illness. This includes Pierre Corleone, Justin saint amour Cass Geddes, Ashley Smith, Canadians across the nation that have lost their lives, that have had mental illness, and where there's been no accountability and transparency. And Suleiman's story, the Justice for Sully movement, is a catalyst to being the voice for all these other tragic stories and to, to put a stop to this and to make sure that another family does not go through what myself and all the other families that I just mentioned do. And that's why this movement is important. And so for you, I guess, what would you like to see ultimately happen? It's very simple, Jennifer. Um, the individuals that killed Suleiman Fikiri, the public officials that under the Ontario government that viciously beat my brother to death, we need criminal charges criminal charges for the guards that killed Suleiman Fikiri. Secondly to that, we need to make sure that after getting accountability and transparency for Suleiman Fikiri, the people with mental illness should not be in jail. They should be in hospitals and in institutions with individuals that have the appropriate tools. But the first and the most important thing with respect to the movement is Suleiman needs to have accountability and justice for his death. And the guards that killed him, the guards that, were, that viciously beat him to death need to be held accountable. These are taxpayer funded individuals. And my brother was killed under government care. It's very simple. If people would like more information or to take a look at uh, Justice for Solly, is there somewhere they can go for that? Absolutely. We have social media presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Justice for Solly, and also our website, justiceforsolly.com. All right. Thank you so much for coming on with us today and uh, continued good uh, luck. Hopefully something will be resolved sooner than later for your family. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.